I am really, really excited to be chatting today with Tammy Bennett. Tammy is a creative who got started in the licensing world. She had a stationary line called Tiger Pocket Press. And I had the pleasure of connecting with her at the National Stationery Show a few years back. And now she's shifted into a new phase of her career where she's a certified life coach. And she, you can hear her talking about this on her weekly podcast, The Show Up Society. So I've been hoping to be chatting with a life coach or a coach at some point in my interviews. And I'm so excited to be connecting with you, Tammy. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I love all that you do. And I'm so happy to get to be here. Yay. Um, so just because I do focus more on creative careers, even though, like I said, I'm really excited to dig into the coaching part of it. Um, can you give me sort of a background of, you know, how you got into licensing and, and built Tiger Pocket Press as kind of like a, just so we know where you started from? Yeah. Um, so many, many years ago, I, I might get my dates a little bit off here, but I have the general idea. Um, I was a fitness instructor and I enjoyed quilting on the side. And there was one day, like so vivid in my memory when I was quilting and I looked at the, the pattern on the quilting cotton and I'm like, that's someone's job. They get to create that cool art that's on this fabric. And I want to be that. I want to do that. And I had never taken an art class in my life other than like the required stuff in grammar school. And I'm like, but that's okay. I can do this. And so I signed up for a, a class online on how to do uh, Adobe Illustrator. I learned how to create a uh, repeat pattern and I created a pattern every single day for a year. We can talk about that more in a little bit, I think, but um, so yeah, and so then I had, and I created more than one pattern on some of those days, so I ended up having like this catalog of like 400 something repeat patterns, and I took myself to Surtex, and um, I got several licensing contracts, and it was amazing, and I, yeah, uh, I was in art licensing for a few years, and then I really wanted to have a little bit more creative control. I wanted to have the the outcome of what I, my art, be exactly how I started it, and that's not always the case in art licensing, and that's okay, but I also just wanted that creative control. I wanted to create products that were mine from start to finish, uh, products that I wanted to go into a store and be like, oh my gosh, I have to have this, and so I created Tiger Pocket Press. And um, yeah, I, I started that stationary business with about 84 SKUs, 84 different card designs, because I had also drawn in my sketchbook every single day for many years. And so every one of my first cards that I opened my business with was directly from something in my sketchbook. So um, yeah. That's amazing. I I love that because I often talk about that light bulb moment because we've all had it of like, we're surrounded by patterns every day for our whole lives. And then suddenly mm -hmm. there's that day where you're like, wait a second, someone yeah. has to do this. <laughs> that's so like, cool. That's the classic like connection for surface pattern design. So I love that, that you have that memory of when that happened for you. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I could just, I'm excited about all that background, but I'm, uh, so I could dig into that. And I love that you went just like went for it and went with Surtex and just like, I, I just love how you, how you, um, you know, kind of, just took yourself in the direction that you wanted to, but what led you from being in stationary and having, having this stationary company to transition into uh, your newer focus? Yeah, um, I love this story too. So in the background, that whole time for 13 years, I was also a running coach. And so uh, coaching has always been just a part of who I am and what I do. Um, so that's just like a little tidbit of background. And now if we fast forward to 2020, I'm building up my Tiger Pocket Press business. I have a big business goal for the year. I go to the National Stationery Show where we got to chat. And then COVID happened mm. like a month later, COVID hit. And I met with, I had a life coach at the time and I met with her and I was like, you know what? I got to throw all my uh, projections, my goals out the window because so many of the stores that I was selling my cards to were either going out of business temporarily or permanently. Mm. And I just thought there's no way I can hit my goals. Like I just have to change them. And she wasn't having it. She was like, is that true? Are there other ways that you could do business? And I'm like, uh, I guess. So I tried it and I tripled my business in 2020 um, with, with Tiger Pocket Press. So that was amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. But there was that piece of me that missed so desperately 
coaching and the the interaction with people because I couldn't be a running coach during that time. We weren't allowed to meet in person. So I was really, really missing that component of having hands-on real life conversations with people and helping them and seeing this impact that you're helping make on their lives. And so that missing that component combined with seeing how my life coach helped me so much during that time. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I really want to be kind of on the other side of this, helping people, helping creatives, helping runners get through these tough times. I want to do what she did for me. I want to do that for other people. And so I really started transitioning and I signed up right away to become certified in, in life coaching. And that I really kind of just, you know, kind of became on the other side of what I, I had gone that. through. That's, that's amazing. And, and I think we'll talk a little bit later about how coaching has, is, is so impactful, but I, thinking about that transition um, now I, you, you shut down tiger pocket press, right? Is that's correct? Or is it still? I did, like a little... Yes. I, okay. I, I so did. I, wanted... I kept it for a few more months. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to ask about that. Like, was that I think, you know, transitioning into a new phase of your career, you know, I feel like it, there's such an opportunity to, you know, have that transitional period and, and, and wanting to hold on to what you built because you, you, you took yourself from not having any art background to this, like, you know, having a stationary company and having, and tripling your business. That's incredible. So it's like, was that a really difficult decision or was that like a, Oh, it's so obvious. This is clearly my next step. Like, tell me how, how you made that, that decision. Yeah, it was really hard. It was really hard. Um, <laughs> I was like, I mean, I feel like it would be. I, yeah. I, I mean, it was like this baby I created from nothing. And now I'm in, you know, my goal was to be in a hundred stores. And I was like at 90 something at the time. And um, yeah, it felt really hard. And I I held on to it for a little bit. And then I decided, you know what, like, I really want to go all in. And I want to become the person that believes in herself so much that she can go all into something. And so then in February, March of 2021, I said goodbye. And I wrote to all the retailers, I told them what was up, I got to my 100 stores, I got to 101. So I, you know, I I made my goal. But yeah, Um, and at that point, it had become clear there was a day where I spent over eight hours uh, sleeving cards. So putting them into the clear sleeve that you send to shops and, you know, like seventh or eighth hour, I'm thinking I could have spent this time helping eight people in the world do something. And there's nothing wrong with sleeving cards and, and, and being a part of that industry. But for me, the connection that I wanted to have at that time, it made it really clear. Like, yes, this is the right decision to let this baby go and to just go full force into the coaching. But I do, I do miss it a little bit. Yeah. that That's a really, that's something that I'm kind of, you know, s- struggling with because I go back and forth, but I originally had two pieces to my business, which was freelance design work and art licensing. And then in mm-hmm. 2021, I added, I mean, I had done teaching before, but I added in a, a really like big teaching course and, uh, or course about starting your surface pattern business. And then that led me to get into doing like interviews and, and blog stuff and like all this kind of like content and, and educational content. And mm-hmm. Now I'm like, do I really want three pieces of my business? <laughs> you know, do I want to let one of those things go? Do I want to let two of those things go? Do I want to just throw all three away and start <laughs> start with something else? Sometimes yes. I have those days where I have to. <laughs> we all do, right? Yeah. So it's, so yeah, to like, to close one out, but I, but I hang out even like when I've had some ideas of like, maybe I'm going to do less client work and stick with like licensing and, and teaching um, then I'm still kind of holding on to client work in a way that is not, you know, definitive. And so I can just imagine that, yeah, especially, um, yeah, when you've built up this, this company and it relies on you and your new, your new art and your, and your packaging and all the like production and stuff like that. It's like having, making that decision is a, seems like a really tough one. So, yeah. Um, so one thing that I remember seeing from you is a project, um, which I think has really evolved and you'll, you can talk, tell me about it, but tiny daily habits. Um, this is, this started as a project with you, or can you tell me a little bit what the origin of tiny daily habits was and what has that, you know, kind of sparked for you? 
Yeah. Um, so if we need to get back to that beginning of my story, when I noticed the art on the fabric and decided I wanted to be a surface pattern designer, um, I remember a conversation I had had with my roommate in law school. And she was saying, if you want to be a writer, then you write every day and then you are a writer. And so I thought, if I want to be an artist, then I need to create art every day and become an artist. And so I just set that goal for myself to create a surface pattern design, a repeat pattern every day for a year, because I thought there's no way that I'm not going to improve at my pattern design if I'm doing it every day, if I'm doing it consistently. Right. And so it just became this, like, what's the tiniest piece of being a surface pattern designer that I could do? And it's, oh, it's create a pattern. You could probably go even tinier than that and, you know, just create the elements in the pattern. But for me, it was a, a repeat pattern. That's the tiniest piece of that bigger goal that I could do every day. And so I did it every day for a year. And then at that same time, I also started a, a gratitude journal. And I have kept that habit every day without missing for almost 10 years. On November 9th, it will be 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so um, you, you not only get the benefit of the out, like the catalog of work, right? But for me, it became so much more. It became this whole thing of where I built this trust in myself that if I said I was going to do something, I would do it. It built this confidence because now I'm like, well, yeah, I'm an artist. I have 400 pieces of art I can show you right now. And so it just became this bigger thing. And I've ended up teaching classes about it. I've kept so many different tiny daily habits over the years. Um, and it's just become a big part of my work because when we take this big goal, this big project and bring it down to its tiniest piece and work on that consistently, it's amazing the strides that we can make. And so, yeah, I just, I, I love what it has become. That's, I, I love that too, because I will admit that I'm not good at habits. Being consistent is not my best uh, strong, strong suit, but what I do love and what I do always, you know, try to get people to, behind is the idea of action. And I think what mm -hmm. you're saying about tiny daily habits, about how it builds your confidence is what I say, the same thing that I say about action. It's like, you know, once you've done something, you have more confidence about it. You're not as scared. You're not in your head, just thinking like all the terrible things that could happen yes. because you've done it and you saw that the world didn't explode or whatever. And so, you know, moving forward is, is, you know, and, and breaking that up into tiny, tiny portions is such a wonderful way um, to do that. I've been trying to get more consistent about, I've never been an artist who does art every day uh, to, you know, to my detriment. So <laughs> I've been trying to do, trying to do it more to get out of the creative slump that I've been in. And I only just did like a little mini challenge for myself of seven, seven days. And obviously that's not very much, but I was like, okay, I did it. And you can mm -hmm. remembering like when you did your, your, you know, a, hundred, a year of, of patterns, you know, was there times, did you have a certain time limit or was there times where it was like, I've got 10 minutes and times where you spent like two hours or what was your like routine on that? Yeah, for sure. And first, I just want to back up for one second and just say, like, it's not for everybody. Doing the everyday thing is not for everybody. I tend to be sort of an all or nothing person, so it just fits my personality. But I think you're so right about the main goal of it is just that taking action and doing it consistently. It doesn't Consistent doesn't have to mean every day, mm -hmm. but just, you know, keep putting yourself out there and building that confidence every time you go out there and do it. So you're you're totally right on. And and don't, don't discount seven days. Seven days <laughs> of doing it is still a lot, and that's really incredible. Incredible. Um, but yeah, there were definitely days. And one of the things I talk about a lot when I teach tiny daily habits is that some days are ugly days, mm -hmm. meaning there were some patterns that like I didn't take to Surtex with me. They were not going to see the light of day. They were like, there was literally a day when I just wasn't feeling well. I drew three rectangles on the page and then I just organized them kind of in this repeat just to go through the motion of showing up mm -hmm. to the page and showing up to do the work. Um, so the pattern was awful, right? But that wasn't the point of it. The point of it was me becoming a person who can just continually show up for herself. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't do a time limit, but a lot of times when I teach tiny daily habits, I say, just do a time limit, whatever it is, five minutes. Can you draw for just five minutes? Literally put on a timer when it's over, then you can decide, do I want to keep going or am I, am I done for the day? And five minutes is totally enough. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great advice. Um, so mindset just going to dig in. <laughs> Let's do it. it. You know, it's, it's absolutely everything. And lately what I've been talking about and it's sort of crystallizing for me, I mean, I've definitely always 
you know, realize that mindset's important, but it's been crystallizing for me lately that, you know, to have a creative career that, you know, is independently driven, like you're doing it yourself, your own business, you need three things. And portfolio is obviously one. You mm-hmm. started out like that. Um, marketing is one that as, a, you know, as an artist, sometimes we shy away from. So I'm always kind of pushing the marketing thing. But then mindset is like the third and potentially most important. It is the most important piece, really. Like, honestly, portfolio is probably the smallest piece of that pie, um, which mm-hmm. sounds kind of wild when you're setting out to be an artist um, or creative in, in whatever way. What are some of the, you know, biggest parts of a creative business from someone who's done it and now someone who's looking at it as, you know, as a life coach and someone who can understand how, how, how you frame things is so important. What are some of the biggest parts of creative business that people aren't, you know, thinking about or, or, or talking about enough when they're getting into the, the business? Yeah, I have a couple here that I think are super important. And the, the probably the biggest one, and people really don't like to talk about it, is that failure and rejection is literally part of the process. Nothing has gone wrong. It is part of what you do. And so when I was in art licensing, I sent stuff to uh, agents. I sent stuff to companies all the time. Every time I went into a store and I liked a product, I picked it up. I looked at the manufacturer and I got their info and I sent stuff out all the time. With my Tiger Pocket business, I there were months when I would send a hundred uh, catalogs and samples and a handwritten note saying I would love to be in your store, and I would get maybe three stores that said yes. So that's ninety-seven no's, that's ninety-seven mm-hmm. rejections or failures, mm-hmm. but that was just part of what you do. I, it's similar to an actor or an actress; they're always putting themselves out for roles, and they only get a fraction of it. And so I think if we go into it as creatives, knowing this is just part of what's going to happen, I'm going to be told no. People aren't going to buy my work. They're not going to like it. Some people, but there are people that will. And if you just, it's like the more no's you get, the more yeses you get. And it's sort of just like a math, a numbers game. Just keep putting yourself out there all the time and you will get the results. But I think so many creatives, it is a part of us, right? What we create and we take it personally and we're like, they said, no, they don't like me. And it's not that at all. And just, right. If you just know going in, I'm going to get a heck heck ton of no's. It's okay. You don't feel bad. Nothing has gone wrong. You're not doing it wrong. This is just part of the recipe. So that's probably the number one that I like to tell people. That's like, how important is that? That's such a great point. Um, and, and you're right. It's like art is so, I, I, I also talk about this a lot is that art is so, it feels so personal. Um, mm-hmm. but it, but the rejections never are, they really aren't. And that's right. what I try to impress upon people because people do, they have the fear of rejection. They have this thing like, oh, I'm going to have to get all these no's and it's going to mean something specifically about me and my art and my ability to do this. And it doesn't, it means none of that. It really is not personal in any way. It's about business decisions. It's about, you know, what they have and what they don't have at that moment, what they need at that moment, what their market numbers, projections, blah, 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 blah. All kinds of stuff that has literally nothing to do with what kind of, you know, how, how good you are as an artist. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, remembering that that is part of the process. I love that. Um, is there any, did you have any other ones or that? Yeah. That's amazing. So no. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I have a couple. Um, I don't, we could, I mean, we could spend all day on this part of it, but, um, one other one that I see a lot, and this kind of ties into your like marketing piece is that I see so many creatives and they, they make their work and they build a website and then they sit there and they just wait for all the buyers to come in. And it's like, no, you have to take control of your own business. You have to put yourself out there a million times to a million people in all kinds of places. And I I just, it's not that if you build it, they will come mentality when we have our own businesses, it's I'm going to build it. And then I'm coming to you and you, and you, and you, and you, you, right. Mm -hmm. And so just having that mindset of being willing to put yourself out there so many times. So that kind of like drives that marketing piece of, yes. you know, having that mentality. Totally. And that, that is a, that's another, you know, hard one for people to get, to get over because they're like, I got into this business because I like to draw kittens or whatever. It's right. like, not because I want to like have my face all up and everything, but mm-hmm. you know, the, I think the benefit is you don't have to have your, you don't have to be, you know, 
like the forefront of your brand necessarily. You can be, you know, if you go to Surtex, yes, you have to be out there and like shaking hands and like trying to, you know, catch some attention, but you can sure. send emails from behind your, you know, computer, you can send DMs, mm -hmm. you can do, you know, you can send mailers. Um, so there are ways to do it where your art still takes a front, you know, the center of the, the narrative, but you are still, you know, working to make those connections. So yeah. yeah so and important. can I just tack on one little thing that kind of might help with that is if we think about our art as being useful or helpful to the people that we're sending it to, then we're being in service to them. You know, if they need Christmas art and we send that kitten with the Santa hat to the people that need Christmas art, we are helping them. They need what we do. And so getting into that mindset of like, hey, I have this stuff that's going to help you sell your products. And then you send it, you are being helpful to them. And so I, I like to get into that frame of mind is like, they want this, they need this, this will help them. And then it sometimes makes it a lot easier to send because you're being this helpful, helpful. person. It's not about yes, you, it's so about artists, your helping. Yeah, so many artists feel like they're bothering an art director right. or they're, yeah, they're, yeah bothering is basically the main word that I have heard over and over again mm -hmm. and it's like no what you have you they can't do their jobs without your art you know right they need and and when they find that fresh art that's different from what they have and that hits the the exact spot that they need at that moment that's like oh you know it's like yes. that's the perfect thing <laughs> that's what they want so it's like yes it's true that sometimes your art isn't going to hit that perfect mark but you know they they need to be having that you're you're yeah exactly you are being helpful when you send that you are being in service I love that that's yeah those are two really important sort of shifts that people can can think about when they're getting into building their business I love that yeah um I wanted to dig in really a little bit more on just coaching in general, because even though I think, you know, now that I've had my business for uh, nine years, I've been working for myself, it's, you know, coaching has, the idea of coaching has, is more like normalized, I think. I'm sort of like more in the online space and in the online space, I feel like the coaching life coaching or business coaching are, are things that you hear about a lot, but still the people who are just getting into, you know, surface pattern design or whatever it is, it's still kind of a new idea, you know, like mm -hmm. if you have a coach to, you know, like just for what, you know, it's kind of right. Like, right. But it, it's like, there are so many, um, you know, benefits to having a coach and a re reasons why they're so necessary. And so I'd love to like, just you and me chat about any sort of stories. I mean, you already kind of told one about how your coach helped reframe 2020 for you. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, is, have you had any other, um, you know, real like shift moments that have, have really helped you through, um, by coaching? Like what, what has been your experience with coaching before becoming one? Um, you mean as a coach or as someone getting coached? Getting coached. If yeah. You've had some of that experience. Yeah. I mean, that the biggest one was what we talked about before with reframing the business. But in that year of 2020, um, I reached a whole new level of fitness. I was in shape. I loved my body. I made more money. I had better relationships with my husband, even though we were, you know, cooped in. I mean, COVID mm -hmm. was kind of like a make or break for a lot of relationships, yeah, right? True. And we got along so well. I stopped trash talking myself, mm -hmm. um, which was a really big thing for me. I'm a high achiever. I'm a go-getter. I'm a creative. So all of those, I think, are like a perfect storm of like the people that trash talk themselves right mm -hmm. and we always want to be better and do more and not an, we feel not enough um but i i really stopped most of that i'm still a human i'm still going to do it sometimes but those changes were so dramatic for me even during this time this year of uncertainty and turmoil and a really kind of terrible year mm -hmm. um, of 2020 with so much going on and yet i was still able to make all of these improvements because i was meeting with a coach every week and I mean, it, it, I, I can't express the, the difference in my life before and after being, you know, with a coach. And yeah, I just think it's so valuable really to all humans because all of us humans have these mind blocks and this trash talking, negative talking that we do to ourselves that we don't even realize that it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And a coach helps us see like, it doesn't have to be this much suffering. It's true, right? It's like the, I think it's the objective 
you know, just how you've, I'm, we've all probably heard the advice of like, think about how, would you talk to your friend the way you talk to yourself? Right. And, right. and that is great advice, but it's still sometimes hard to see that, to like step back and realize, oh, in my head, I'm actually saying to myself that, you know, there's no point in me bothering to do this because right. someone on Instagram is already doing it or whatever it is, you know, <laughs> like there, we, it's, it's hard to kind of pinpoint that sometimes. And then, you know, a coach can, can really help you sort of dive in and, and uh, as my coach has, I've had various different coaches um, and, <laughs> some a little bit more mindset based, some business, you know, really more like business based. Mm -hmm. Um, but the idea that, you know, like my more recent coach has been like, Oh, I'm going to reflect that back to you. And what she, you know, she basically just repeats what I'm saying, but she asks like, like, you know, basically, is that really true or is this? And it's like a moment to stop and say, well, well, why do I think that's true? Like who mm -hmm. said it? Me, I said it and I'm talking negatively to myself or whatever. And, right. and it just le can lead to such like, you know, light bulb moments right before I, um, uh, like a, a couple months ago, I did like a promotional, uh, thing for my class, start your surface pattern business. I did some bonus, mm -hmm. um, some bonus, like extra bonuses for people who signed up during that week. And, um, I was working on kind of getting my testimonials together from the more recent class of people who had just taken it. And so I was getting these testimonials and they were some of them, I mean, they were all obviously the testimonials are great, but, um, you know, people were getting work from, from this class and from taking my advice, which is like, that's amazing. You feel mm -hmm. great about that. And then, but a lot of people, because as you know, it takes some time. A lot of people were, the testimonials kind of went around the, the idea of the, that, you know, I made a very, I made it very clear. I know all the steps right now, having taken this class, I know all the steps and my confidence. I have the confidence to do things. Right. And right. so I was sort of saying to my coach, I'm saying like, well, you know, I mean, obviously some people have gotten work, but like, I don't, most people, you know, have had like confidence shifts and they know like the roadmap. And that feels like, you know, I don't know if that's like enough of a, like, you know, why would someone pay so much money for, for that transformation? And then she said to me, like, can you have a successful creative business without confidence and the roadmap? Exactly. Like, ah! Right. <laughs> right. If you're like, I yeah, mean, that's everything. You just gave them excited, everything. Yes, exactly. Yes. So they that, will pay for that. That ended up kind of being like my market. Like, I mean, you know, I was like, I'm not making any promises about like what, like you're going to be some wildly successful. You're going to make a million dollars after this course. Obviously it can't pass. I would never do that anyways, even if <laughs> I had a lot of evidence, but like, you know, it's, it's really, you do need that confidence. As I said, mindset is super important and you have to yeah. know what you're doing. Like if you have zero clue, you're going to be like wandering around, you know? So yeah, that was one shift that, that sort of coaching like I said it but she had to say it back to me to make and and add a you know a little bit of wisdom in there obviously to mm -hmm. to make it really clear so that is just um that's just one of my you know kind of coaching stories that was really important to me so it's, yeah I it's love that I love it um what so since I said I've, I've sort of had some like more mindset more and then more business coaching. I, I haven't had like a specifically a life coach. So could you tell me the difference between sort of those, you know, people uh, like what you do versus maybe what someone who's more like business focused would do? Yeah. Um, and I think that the world is kind of changing where a lot of the business coach and life coach are sort of starting to overlap and interweave a little bit more. I know a lot of business coaches who are also focusing on the mindset part. Yes. But to me, I think the general kind of idea is a business coach really helps you with like the logistics and the advice and, and you should do this step and this step and this step. And it like giving like that kind of map that you mm -hmm. talked about. Mm -hmm. And then I view a life coach as someone who helps you with all aspects of your life. And that can include business. Like I have a lot of creative entrepreneurs that a lot of what we work on is business, but it's kind of like that mindset behind the roadmap, giving them the confidence to then take the steps on the map. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, like, but like I said, I think it is starting to be a little bit more interweave because I feel like the mindset part is becoming so evident that it's so important mm -hmm. that a lot of the business coaches that are giving the step-by-step -step 
map are starting to include that mindset piece. And um, I've actually worked for a couple business coaches to do the mindset piece for their people. And so it, it really can work well together. I love that. Yeah. Um, the first coach, well, I mean, I guess I trying to think I, I've had like consultations and stuff, but the first sort of like longer term coaching um, situation I signed up for was uh, at the beginning of 2020. And it was when <clears throat> I knew that I was going to be, I wanted to, the next step was I wanted to release a big course. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted that, yeah, that support on how to do like a live launch, like what's the, yeah, what's the kind of tech behind some of it and what's, Mm -hmm. what are the steps that I need to think about and helping, helping clarify, like I had a lot of different course advice, uh, course ideas, and it was sort of like, what's the one, I don't know what to focus on. I feel really lost. And, you know, she helped me sort of clarify like, okay, well, this one is is the one, you know, that seems like it's going to resonate the most. This is the kind of research that you've done and blah, blah, blah. Um, And then helping me kind of implement it. But definitely mindset did come into it because of course, as I'm about to like launch a course, I'm like, you know, freaking out and stuff like that. So that's obviously like, you know, obviously came into it, but yeah. So that's been my experience with business coaching. And now the coach that you said, or when you were saying at the beginning of 2020, was that a life coach? Cause you were saying, talking about fitness and your relationship with your husband and stuff like that. So she kind mm-hmm. of really covered covers like all aspects. Right. Right. Yeah. She was a life coach. And yeah. So like, even with the creative entrepreneurs that I coach, a lot of times we're coaching on like a relationship they're having with a best friend or them getting into a habit of walking every day. So it, it, you know, but they all tie in together, mm-hmm. right? If you're having better relationships, then you have more mind space to use on your work because you're not like worrying about this person over there. And if you are getting a little bit of exercise, you have that confidence, you have that energy to then build on your business. So it really is all interrelated. It is. It totally is. Um, all right. So probably right at this point, anyone who's watching is like, okay, I need a life coach. <laughs> I need a life coach right now. I need a business coach. I need what I got to find someone. Tell me what are some of the hallmarks of a good coach and how should someone, you know, go about finding the right relationship for hiring a coach? Because obviously we know that on the internet, it seems like everyone's a coach sometimes. I know, I know. Well, I mean, like I said, some people are still really new to this. So this might be like, oh, really? I've never seen this. But like, if you're an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur, you're getting, you know, a lot of sort of feedback about, you know, oh, I'm a coach as of yesterday. And, and, and it's not necessarily like, not everyone can, has a skill set to move people forward. So what, what kind of things should people look for if they're looking for a coach? Yeah. Um, I did a whole podcast episode on this one time because I was so into coaching and what a good coach is. But for me, I think um, a couple of things. One is they believe in you, but not necessarily believe you. And what I mean by that is they believe in your ability. They see possibilities for you that you might not even see for yourself. And they believe just in your innate ability to do more than you ever thought you could. But by not believing you, I mean, they don't believe your story. Like when you said like, oh, you know, they didn't get enough results for what they paid for. And it's like, Mm-mm, that's not true. They just got confidence in a roadmap. They're ready to go. Yeah. You know, and like when I came to my coach with like, Oh, COVID's happening. I'm not going to be able to, you know, hit my goals. And she was like, "Mm, that doesn't have to be true. And so I think that's just really important to believe in the client, Mm. but not believe their story necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um, And kind of hand in hand with that is, I think a good coach is willing to say the hard thing. So like when I'm coaching my clients, I might say the thing that they don't really want to hear, but that's going to help them have the most growth. Because if they just want somebody to kind of sympathize with them and empathize with them and just say, oh, it's okay, it's okay. They're not going to grow. They're going to stay just where they are. And they have friends and family to do that. So Mm -hmm. I'm the kind of like tough love person that tells them the thing that they don't want to hear, but they are going to benefit from it so much. And they're going to reach those goals, I think, because of that. And I might be the only person in their world that's willing to say that hard thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, and I think to find the right coach for you, I think almost every coach that I've seen offers like that free 20 to 60 minute consultation call where you kind of get to know each other. I like to find out where clients are right now, where they want to be, what I think the problem is and how I could help. And then we see if we're each a good fit for each other. Um, Because I think, you know, obviously there is that relationship 
kind of rapport that you build with somebody that has to be there in order for it to work. And so I say, definitely, if you're looking for a coach, take advantage of that free consultation call to really find your person. And you might have to do a few, nothing yeah. wrong with that, but you will, you'll, you'll know, I think that you're in your gut, you will know if this person's going to kind of push you in a great way to grow and evolve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did like when I, right before I started working with my current coach, I was, yeah, I was like, I'm, I, I'm not looking for a business coach right now. I'm looking more mindset. And I, mm-hmm. I talked with three, um, three coaches. So yeah, I basically was sort of like, a, all right, so what, you know, here's my issue. Does this sound like something that you think you can, you know, this goes, you know, works for you and then had those conversations and, and made a decision from there. So yeah, definitely trying, trying it out. And, and it's not necessarily going to always be the, the first person that you find on Google or whatever. Right. Right. <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, so you on your website, I was, or I was looking at your about page and you, you know, list out some of the things that you are obsessed with. And I relate so much to a lot of it. And like, Mm -hmm. obviously all the stuff you've been saying, I've been like, yes, yes, totally. (laughs) So, um, you know, imperfect action is, is one of my favorites as well. Progress over perfection. Um, you know, not taking yourself so seriously is really important to me too. Um, so I try to convey those when I teach as well. And, and we get in our own way so, so, so easily. So trying to, to remember to just like push through and, and all that kind of stuff. What are some hints or suggestions for, you know, those really hardcore perfectionists, overthinkers, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, I'm a perfectionist. And it's like, you know, how I think I used to be, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe not. I don't know. Overachiever for sure. Overachiever yeah. versus perfectionist. I'm not sure. But um, now I'm like, ah, <laughs> you, know, you got to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. So um, it, everything is just messily imperfect. And I, I totally embrace it. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish this could be a little bit neater or, you know, whatever. But it is, you know, it's like, it's better to be out there. And I know the information is helping people. So, um, Talk to me about what kind of suggestions people who really suffer from like getting it right, just right, just right could, could, um, you know, employ. Yeah. Um, well, you know, perfectionism really is just kind of like a nice sounding word for fear, like fear of it not working out, fear of that rejection again, fear of failure. And so, but we tell ourselves, our brain wants to keep us safe from that because that doesn't feel good, right? Getting rejected or, or not having it work out doesn't feel good. And our brain is like, no, 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 don't do that thing because it might hurt really bad. And so it just says, keep working on it, make this more perfect, you know, add a little shading to that wolf that's on your pattern, whatever it is. And it, it, and so then we think we're being responsible and we're doing more research and we're doing more planning and we're doing more perfecting. We think that we're being responsible, but really we're just keeping ourselves small. We're mm-hmm. keeping ourselves from growing and becoming successful. And so if we just kind of remember that, that this is just my brain, just trying to keep me safe, trying to keep me from that failure or the possibility of rejection, then we can just say like, brain, thank you for your concern, but I'm going to be okay. So I kind of like think of the brain as like a helicopter parent. Sometimes it's like, but did you do your homework? Did you do this? Did you do this? And you're like, I got this. I'm going to be okay. So just being aware of it and like, oh, I see what my brain's doing here. It's telling me to like change. Should I, you know, ask people on Facebook, should the background of this pattern be pink or blue and take the vote? Stop. My brain's just trying to keep me safe from like putting this pattern out there. Mm -hmm. And so just being aware and just telling your brain, I am safe. It is going to be okay. If I do get rejected from this, you know, if nobody buys this art, I'm still going to be okay. I can make a million other pieces of art that are going to sell. Yeah. And so just being aware telling your brain, I am going to be safe and then embracing that B minus work. And so mm. someone told me this once and I was like, Oh my God, B minus what? Cause I'm, I always <laughs> wanted like the A, the yeah, all A yeah, honorable. Definitely. And I was like, what is happening? What is okay? But I realized that I can put stuff out and it might have a little typo here and there. I don't have to proofread it five times and it's still going to get the point across and people are still going to sign up with me and, and get the value of what I'm offering. And so the same thing for art, it can be, you know, imperfect um because also too we're creators 
Right. <laughs> we are go- we are the harshest critic. Believe 100%. me, the people seeing it are not mm-hmm. seeing the flaws in it that you are seeing. Not a chance. Mm-hmm. And so it's like just move out of your own way. Put what you think is imperfect work out there, and let them decide. Mm-hmm. You know. Right. And so what's really interesting is when I had that daily uh, the daily surface pattern. For the first few months, I was posting it every day. And, um, and then I just kind of fell off the posting part, but it was really interesting that there were days when I'm like, oh my gosh, this pattern is so ugly. I don't want to post it. And then people would write, this is my favorite one. Oh my gosh. And so it's like, you know, you are not always the best judge of what is going to be successful or not exactly. out in the world. Right. And so you totally. might as well put it out there and let them decide. And then you can decide to polish it or edit it or change it later, but get it out there. Yes. Totally. I have a course called, uh, uh, like an older course, a smaller course called uh, Successful Licensing Collections. And it's it talks about creating the collections. And then I have a little pep talk pa- part where I'm like, okay, now you've done all the steps and you still don't think it's done. You're still not happy with it. Let's right. talk about why that's not true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, yes. And, and one of the things is, P.S., it's licensing. Like you can be done with it. You can start showing it. If it doesn't license and six months down the road, you're like, the reason is because it should be olive colored. Like then change it. Cool. If right. It right. Tomorrow, because it was in Navy, then you, who cares what you thought you were wrong. Exactly. You're so right. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh man. I think that we could, we'd be a good tag team for, <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> if you need like a hype man, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, all right. So I, 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 maybe I, these questions aren't quite in the best order now I'm thinking, but done is better than perfect. So we're moving. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Exactly. No, tricky topic. To- Cause we were talking before about like, what would we look for in a life coach now talking about, um, investing in yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. So the creative community, whew, I am hearing some fatigue. Maybe tell, yeah. uh, tell me if you're hearing this too, but everyone is so over all the offers, the classes, the coaching, the memberships, you know, vying for our attention, promising to make a difference in our lives. Like people are mm-hmm. over it. And, and, um, I, I think that people need guidance and coaching throughout their career. Like whether you're just starting or you've been doing it for 20 years, um, it's so valuable to have, have that support. But I do also understand that, especially as a newer artist, you know, it can be really hard to, um, swallow the idea of, of taking an expensive course to learn how to do something and then continuing on to invest in a coaching package where, you know, you're getting the one-on-one support that you need. Um, it, it can get really expensive. And when you, do, when you're not making money from, from this endeavor, that is your creative career yet, or you're, or you have like, you know, you make your seven fifty on spoon flour each month or whatever it is, you know, making those big leaps can be really scary. Um, I just wanted to kind of chat about that. I have some mm-hmm. examples, stories, um, but I was curious what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. I think first of all, when us humans put money in for something, we're looking at what we're giving up and we're not looking at what we could get from it. So Mm -hmm. we're thinking, okay, I'm going to pay a thousand dollars for this course. That's a thousand dollars that I don't get to use for this, 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 and this, but we're not taking the moment to say, but what if I gain the skills that are going to help me create tens of thousands of dollars in my business, just from what I learned in this one course. So I feel like First step is to just think about the possibility of what you're giving up, but give equal airtime to what you could be gaining that could be so much more valuable than those dollars that you're giving up. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I see so much in the creative industry is that people sign up for classes and courses and coaching and workshops and all the things thinking that that's going to be the magic bullet. Mm -hmm. And they think that buying it is it. And they forget Mm -hmm. that they have to do the work to show up and meet these instructors and coaches and workshops more than halfway. I mean, I think like, you know, the workshops and coaches, all of that give you the material, but then you have to take it 
and absorb it and implement it and run with it. And mm -hmm. so I think that so many creatives forget that piece of it that like, oh, wait, I have to do all the assignments. I have to like show up for all the calls, do all the work and then keep going and keep implementing it. And so I, I think that we all need to take and listen, I am guilty. I mean, I, I have spent tens of thousands of dollars before I came became a coach on all the things that I thought were going to fix me and make it work and make it mm -hmm. like, like I said, the magic miracle pill. Like if I just take this class and it's all going to work out and mm -hmm. I didn't take responsibility and I didn't show up for the lessons. I didn't, I, there were hardly any classes or courses that I completed mm -hmm. because I got so discouraged and I'm like, but wait, it's not happening yet. People aren't knocking down the door buying my art yet. What's happening? This, you know, I should never have paid this money instead of looking at like, oh, wait, I didn't integrate all of this and apply it and you know, I didn't yeah. show up as fully as I could have. Um, and then just one more piece of that is I've had so many clients that made a huge transformation just in the act of showing up and betting on themselves and saying, I'm going to pay for coaching with you and I'm going to do all the work and I'm going to make this be worth it. I'm going to show up for me by me paying this money. I'm betting on me and I'm saying that I am valuable and that I am going to show up and do this. I believe in myself that I can create these results. And so that's like, after you've accepted that you have responsibility too, then that next step is like, I have responsibility. I'm going to, I'm going to get every cent worth of this mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and and showing up and and having that willingness to believe that they are capable of getting the results yeah and so I think even that sometimes if you have that responsibility piece and that belief in yourself then yeah the major transformation can can happen the second that you decide to pay mm -hmm. yeah yeah I totally I agree with that and I, and I think you know it is it's it's such a tricky situation or like you know sometimes figuring that out um can be really tricky and I think there's also you know I can kind of see both sides of it because I'll tell a story about a student of mine she um you know she, she took my class last year and she was she had only pretty much like discovered like illustration and surface design a few months prior and okay. she dove right in and she ended up creating her first website in my course because I do talk about how to create a website and everything like that which I'm always like I mean I have a whole module on it so I'm expecting people to create a website if they don't have one already but I'm still like super cheering for anyone who accomplishes that because it is it's a super big step and it, and it feels hard and I it's not that hard I promise but you know so she created mm -hmm. her own website and she made these beautiful mail like she followed it to the letter basically and um, did an amazing job and and so awesome now she then took another membership course not with me but with someone else that you know sort of helped this is her telling me about her you know she has told me afterwards that you know she took this membership that really helped her like focus in on her style and what was unique about her and her creativity and it really mm -hmm. helped her blossom and then the final piece that she went for was um some one-on-one -on -one coaching with again not me just another person that helped with business now I didn't know all that other secondary stuff right away, but what I'm seeing on, on, on like in the Facebook, my Facebook group of, for my class and like her DMing me and her Instagram is she has these, this beautiful artwork. Now she has a website. Now she's starting to get local clients because she's in Hawaii. So it's very specifically local that she's kind of focusing on because her style is very like um, perfect for Hawaii, I guess. I don't know. Tropical. Um, okay. she's starting to get these local clients and stuff like that. And then she's starting to do murals for local places. Mm. And then she's like, um, to me from the outside, I'm like, she's like the, the go-to Hawaii. <laughs> like, I don't know, but it's like, it yeah. seems like she's getting so much business. And then she DM'd me and she's like, I just got my first, like, like $10,000 deal. It was for like some, like, I don't awesome. know, shopping plaza or something that she was going to do the, all the signage and the advert, whatever. It's like, that's an amazing transformation. And, but she uh -huh. was going through all the steps she was taking, taking the, um, you know, the pieces of starting with the course and building on that and then going into her membership and her coaching. And, and she even had like a post on Instagram of like, let me just talk about why coaching is amazing because it really just helps drill in on where you're, but, you know, I would also say that, yes, she clearly was taking responsibility and really putting the effort in, but yeah, it's not, you know, 
we have to be honest that it's not always like that. And mm -hmm. it's not always uh, like, I, you know, cause now at this point, she's only been doing it for like a year. And she, like I said, she's already getting $10,000 clients. I'm going to go work for her. Like I've been doing this for 20 <laughs> years and like call me, you know? So, right. um, so it, but it's not always like that. And, and mm -hmm. so I think um, people kind of get into this idea of like, I'm being sold the the dream but not everyone makes the dream so mm -hmm. am I being sold a lie or is it me and do I is it do I have to like if it doesn't work out what happens if I give it my all and it doesn't work out in some way then right did I fa fail do I need to pay someone else for some more like what is I think that's where the disconnect comes because it feels like you know some courses can feel like they're being marketed as like all you have to do is it, to some degree it is a bit of a magic billet like follow the steps and you'll get there right and right you know it's that that there has to be some part of the population where that's not true. Like you can follow the steps and it's still not going to get you there. <laughs> so. Right. Well, I have a great example of that. I, before I started my podcast, I signed up for this amazing magic bullet e-course for a thousand dollars. It was everything you need. Mm -hmm. I followed it to the T. I did every single thing above and beyond every single assignment. And I, really thought it was a terrible course. It was a terrible course. Like I came away with that, not really understanding anything about how to publish my, um, my podcast, not knowing anything about how to create content. And I was so mad for a few days about that thousand dollars that I spent that I felt like I did. I showed up as much as I could. And I didn't, I came out of it without a podcast. And I came out of it like there were a couple assignments like about content that I felt like were really against my intuition mm. and like didn't make sense with, with how I wanted to create content. So I sat for a few days kind of anger and angry and bitter about that thousand dollars. And I thought, what? can I take from this that I would pay a thousand dollars to learn? And basically it was, I know what I want to create. I know what kind of content I want to create. I can figure this out. I'm really smart. We all are. We all can figure things out. And I decided I'm going to, that was my thousand dollar lesson to trust me that I know how to figure it out, that I know how, what content works best for me, what my style works like best for me the length of my podcast where, you know, they were telling me something different than I wanted to create. And so I, I decided I'm going to get a thousand dollars worth of lessons from this mistake, this mm -hmm. bad program. And I feel like, and then I, within two months, I had published five episodes of my podcast. I had figured it all out. I had content that I was really proud of. And I think, so even though if we take one of those classes that doesn't live up to the hype, that isn't what it promised us, how can we still take something from that and learn something valuable? And to me, it was that piece of like, I can, I can figure this out and trust myself to be my expert mm -hmm. on creating my own podcast. And so I, I think that. sometimes we kind of forget that we can still salvage a learning moment. Like I paid a thousand dollars didn't get my podcast up from that, but I did learn something really valuable about myself. Um, but I do, I, I do see both sides. I do agree with you that there are courses out there that are promising the world and not delivering. And it's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, taking that risk and, and obviously, you know, seeing what you can learn from other, from people who have taken the course or whatever, mm -hmm. getting, trying to, you know, chat with people and say, oh, I see, I see you talking about this. Like, can I just ask you, you know, a question or something like that? I mean, doing a little bit of research in that way can be, can be a helpful way to sort of mitigate that risk. Um, I know for my course, mine is sort of like a, all right, do all this stuff and then repeat. <laughs> so it's like, just mm -hmm. keep doing it. You'll get there. <laughs> So it's like, yeah. you know, the pitching and I'm, I'm talking about how to pitch and, and how to send out these emails. And it's like, okay, well, guess what? Like, you know, cause people like, you know, I've had students who've been like, I send out 20 emails and it's like, that's amazing. Congratulations, you know, but then with no like immediate or no, you know, reply. And it's like, okay, but you know, you do have to keep going and you have to follow right. up with all those 20 emails. And then you also have to, you know, like three months down the road, send out another 20 emails to 20 totally different people. And like, you know, whatever you have to keep going. And so that part, um, you know, keeping that motivation, uh, especially in this industry can be, you know, the really hard and, and for anything really like any course that you're taking, keeping up the motivation after the course is done is, is the, is a lot of work. So remembering. Right. That. Right. Yeah. Super important. Um, 
Well, so I've been following you for a while. Uh, I, the show up society is your podcast. And, um, you know, the reason we're sitting here chatting today is because you sent me an email with your audacious goal, as you described it, which is reconnecting with 150 people um, that you have previously connected with. So literally, you just responded to an email that we had sent after National Stationery Show like a year and a half ago, and was like, hey, just check it <laughs> in. And I mean, I'm obsessed with that. I love that. So can you tell me like, what has that um, sort of where did you come up with that? Or like, why, why did you decide to challenge yourself to that? And what has that kind of brought you? Yeah, I think it's because I uh, went back home to visit and I ran into a friend that I hadn't seen in many years. She had no idea what I was up to. Um, we talked about life coaching and she referred a client to me. And and so I'm like, you know, there are so many people in my life that don't know what I do. Mm-hmm. I miss that connection with people. Mm-hmm. I want people to know what I'm doing. I am building a business. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's that thing of service again, where I have something that can help you not suffer. And if people I've ever contacted with in the past in my life are suffering, I want to be able to help them. And so it was that just mix of all of those. And from art licensing and from my Tiger Pocket Press, I was used to sending out a lot of feelers, a lot of outreach and Mm -hmm. seeing what came back from it. And so I thought, well, this will be a perfect time to reconnect with people, tell them what I'm doing, offer to help them if they, if they need help or want help. And it will just be so great. And so I think I've reached out to now I'm like at 110. um, And it's been so great. So there have been a lot of non replies, just like no reply whatsoever. And there have been a lot of reconnections like some people from high school and college that I haven't spoken to in years and now we're like oh my gosh my kids are I can't believe your kids are so old or I can't believe that you you know traveled here and here and it's just really fun to connect with humans um you know um yeah and then you know I've had a couple people that signed up for a consult and became clients um so the whole spectrum right from from now I have a new client that's somebody I've known and I can help and I feel great about that And the other side of the spectrum is like crickets, nothing. And they're Mm -hmm. all, all the responses are okay. Yeah, totally. I love that. And yeah, you definitely got the experience of that with the licensing and everything like that. So uh, I love, I love the idea. And like I said, I um, have been wanting to have a a coach, some sort of coach on here because I've mostly been, I've interviewed agents and I've interviewed, Mm -hmm. you know, other artists um, and then your best of both worlds, having been an artist and now being a coach. So um, I was, you know, grateful to have you pop up in my inbox and just be like, oh, this is perfect. Perfect. It works out. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Like, (laughs) and that's, that's, and you know that's where um, you know an artist can land for licensing too. Again, as we exactly. said, like sometimes it's just that perfect moment that it's like, yeah, that's exactly what I need right now. You know, because, exactly. Um, yeah, if it had been a different time, maybe I wouldn't be doing these interviews, and then I wouldn't have or or like having just signed on with a different coach. You know, it's like okay, well, I don't really need coaching or whatever. But then it's like, oh, okay, but you know, people need this yeah. kind of information. So. Um, All right. Well, tell me how now that we're all everyone wants to be, uh, you know, get coached. uh, (laughs) Tell me where tell me what we can do to kind of catch up with you and see what see what you're all about um, and where we can find you. I mean, I'll put all the links and stuff in the description, but just um, how do you you know, how do you work with people and what kind of what should we look out for? Okay, Um, so Instagram is a great place to find me. I am at at show up society on Instagram. My podcast is the show up society podcast and my website is showupsociety.com. I'm I'm trying to be pretty consistent. And and the reason I chose that name is just because I help people show up for themselves. And a lot of times that means like moving themselves out of the way. So then they can like come into the light and show up. And so I love that. No, it's a perfect name because it's like, that's like sort of the action thing, right? It's like take action. Yes. Like being there is, is so much, you know, that's like such a big part of (laughs) moving forward. You have to show up. Right. So I love that. Well, thank you so much, Tammy. This has been awesome. And like I said, I'll put all the links in the description and everything. And I'm so excited to have chatted with you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And thank you for what you do. I so wish that all those years ago, I had your course to start out with. (laughs) It would have been so fun. and, And, you know, I think a little easier. 
If you're looking for more resources around surface pattern design, head over to the link in description for the Surface Pattern Boss Toolkit, which is a free resource library filled with bonus videos about industry incomes, templates, guides, all kinds of resources. Head there now to sign up. If you love learning about surface pattern design and creative business, be sure to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram at eSilverDesign. Also, I would be super grateful if you shared this channel with your surface pattern friends.